this is Brian from Provision Studios and I'm here to do another Pro Tools tutorial. Um, this one will be uh, based on another request I received um, via email on um, mixing. What I'm going to use uh, as my um, media will be a song of mine uh, called Simple Plan. We'll open that now. Basically what we're going to do here is um, um, I'm going to try to keep this as simple and um, short as I can. Really um, this is a very subjective topic. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. There are so many ways you can mix a, a, a song. Uh, there may be different um, different formats you're mixing to. Let's say you're wanting to mix for the internet or you're trying to mix for a CD. Each one will have a different concept or a different way that you're going to approach the session. So I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. This is a session that I mixed for a CD that I made. Let's take, this is the entire mix. Basically what you're going to do is um, you take you take your, your song and you break it down into sections. For instance, you can see here I've got kick, snare, hi-hat, overheads, room. I've got bass, keyboards, low bass, guitar, chorus, I've got a couple other guitar parts here. Um, I've got vocals, which actually this song did not have vocals. Uh, I was going to add vocals, and at the last minute I uh, elected to go without. Anyway, on a song like this, this is a um, sort of a jazzy, alternative rock kind of song. Matter of fact, let me do this. Let me let me go back and re-solo. Um, the uh, entire mix and play it for you. sort of um, ambient kind of verse that kicks into a big chorus here. Anyway, when I started mixing this song, after I had everything recorded, I started mixing with the drums. I took my kick, I took my snare, and I wanted to hear how those two interacted with, with each other. At that point, I would add, once I got it the way I wanted it, I would add um, hi-hat, overheads, and room. And that's basically the beat. There's the chorus. I want to make sure what's happening here as I'm, let's say, mixing the drum kit, per se, is that... Um, I'm not overloading my master bus, which is my master fader here, because obviously this is just the drums. 
I've got more instruments are going to be coming afterwards and you don't want to have your drums taking up all of your uh, headroom there. Next thing I normally do is I'll add the bass. Usually at this point, once I get a good balance between my bass and my drums, in other words, that, too much, too much bass. With this song, my next thing I would mix would be the keys because obviously I know the song and this song is uh, of the keys and the bass, the piano, basically play off of one another. Normally though, I would go with guitar next, but again because of the style of this song, I'm going to blend in my keyboards now. Again, you want to, as you're adding instruments, you want to keep your eye right here. You want to make sure, as you're adding instruments, you are not overloading your main your main output. I like to keep things anywhere from negative 10 to negative 6 dB um, as I'm mixing because I am always going with the end in mind. I'm mixing, saying to myself, okay, if I'm at negative 3 at this phase, when, by the time I get to my mastering session, when I start bring, putting in compression and stuff, I'm going to overload. So I try to give myself plenty of, of headroom as I'm mixing. Obviously next, I'm going to start flowing the guitars in. My peak is negative 5.38 dB, so I'm about a little more than a half a decibel over where I like to go. I like to, say, I like to keep things under 6 dB. Anyway, that's a real quick way of how to approach mixing a song. I know I really didn't show you levels or anything like that. I was just trying to show you a simple concept of how to approach it. You know, I know when I first started mixing, um, there really was no direction or any method. I just sort of went in it, uh, you know, with my... Uh, with my eyes wide open and with no way of not really knowing what I was trying to do. This was an approach I, that, that I started implementing and I realized that it allowed me to get uh, through a mix a little, little bit easier with, with less strain on my ears and um, I could hear things better. I wasn't going in with everything playing at once and just throwing levels around. Starting off with just the kick and the snare, slowly bringing more elements of the kit in, then bringing in my bass, and then start bringing in some of the melodic instruments like the, the piano and the guitar, 
would really allow me to build the mix and then at the very end I would always add vocals I never would start out with vocals I always found that if I started out with vocals it kind of would give me um, uh, I would be battling uh, with my instruments uh, later in the mix when I got the, the everything in there, I realized, oh wow, I started out with the vocals. Now my I just can't seem to get my guitar right. When I got the music right where I needed it, and if I mixed the vocals at the end, it allowed me. It just seemed to allow me to throw my vocals to where it could sit right on top of all the music. If I started out with the vocals, it always seems like by the time I got to the end, the, my vocals were being. Uh, buried under everything else. Either way, this was a way of getting um, uh, everything uh, to sound uh, more level. Uh, another uh, email I got, which I thought I could throw into this tutorial, was someone asked me how to mix everything down when you've, uh, or bounce everything down to a WAV file. And basically what you would do is once you've achieved your mix, and you're happy with your levels, you would go to File, Bounce to Disk. At this point, um, you've got your file types here. You've got AIFF, MP3, QuickTime, which would be if you're doing, if you've got videos and stuff. And SD2 is the old sound design uh, for earlier versions of Pro Tools. Anyway, you select wave there. I suggest interleaved um, if you're going to uh, master or you're going to further process uh, your your mix. And then, depending on how you recorded it, I recommend you keep it whatever you recorded at. I recorded at 44.1, so I'm going to use that here. Um, you can convert after bounce. If you do convert during bounce, um, it gives you more strain on your processor. And if you don't have a really strong processor to begin with, you have a chance of having dropouts uh, during this bounce phase, which is a bad thing, or even um, clipping. So I suggest doing convert after bounce. And then... If you select the import after bounce, it'll allow you it'll allow you when it's done bouncing to actually import your mix down into your session, which is good if you make changes. You can do multiple bounces, so you can chase like let's say you make a a, a a change to your vocal level or you change an effect on a guitar. You can hear uh, how it compares to an earlier mix that you may have done a week or a month earlier or with a different guitar part or maybe a, a different version um, of a drum beat or something. Anyway, it's a nice thing to do. You also can add to your iTunes library on your system or you can upload it right to uh, your SoundCloud account if you have it. Some really nice options here that were not in previous versions of Pro Tools. And then you would click bounce and then you would name it and you can even click where you'd like to save it to. Anyway, I'm not going to do that here now. But that's how you would do uh, a wave file there. Or even an MP3 if you want to go right to the internet with it. Um, and that's basically uh, how you mix and bounce down a, uh, a, a file or a session in Pro Tools. I will... Uh, be working on uh, more tutorials here in the next couple weeks. If you have any more questions, you can either email me or contact me uh, via uh, uh, reply here on YouTube, or um, uh, you can call me. My number is available. You can also go to my website, provisionstudios.com, P-R-O-V-I-Z-I-O-N-S-T-U-D-I-O-S.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.